Cool, the last part of this chapter, we're gonna spend some time talking about oxidation reduction reactions, also called redox reactions. Let's pretend that these markers in my hands are electrons. That was an oxidation reduction reaction. I lost an electron, you gained one. Redox reactions, for short, are simply electron transfer reactions. One species transfers electrons to the other. And we give special names, or at least special names to describe who loses the electrons and who gains the electrons in the process of losing and gaining. And we often use the mnemonic, Leo the lion says grrr, right? What does this stand for? Yeah, lose electrons oxidation, gain electrons reduction. You might also see oil rig. So I don't like this one as much because it doesn't have the letter E in it. And E stands for? Electrons. And it's all about electrons. So I like that. Also, saying Leo the lion says grrr sounds much cooler than just saying oil rig. That just doesn't make any sense, right? So, but take your pick. You need to know the definitions of oxidation and reduction. If we look at a typical reaction here, and I put one on your hand out there. So, two sodium plus Cl2 gas. Cool, it turns out if you mix sodium metal with chlorine gas, it is a nice violently explosive, I shouldn't say violently, but it gives off a ton of heat. You probably see flames. Uh, these are reactive form, sodium chloride, table salt. In this case, got to talk about oxidation states a little bit. So any element, you see it all by itself and there's no charge listed. And I don't care if you only have one of them or if you have more than one of them, as long as it's all by itself, not part of a compound and there's no charge written, it is in the zero oxidation state. So, and again, oxidation state here being analogous to charge. So over here, these are not in the zero oxidation states. This is a compound. We don't have elements by themselves. And we got some rules here for when elements are in compounds. So first of all, when we have ionic compounds, so the monatomic ions are gonna get their typical ion charge. So usually this involves noble gases, right? So in this case, we got our noble gases right here. Every, they've got a filled octet. They are the coolest element on the periodic table, right? So, and everybody wants to look like them. And what makes them cool is that filled octet. For fluorine to look like neon is idle. What has to happen? Gain one electron, which gives you what charge? Negative, Negative one. And so ionic compounds, the halogens here all like to be minus one. Oxygen's column, they like to be minus two, minus three. On the other side, rather than gaining, your metals over here actually like to lose. And so how many electrons would these guys need to lose to look like a noble gas? One. And so typically they have a charge of plus one in ionic compounds, plus two in ionic compounds, plus three in ionic compounds. And these take on a bunch of variable charges that you can't predict typically, but have to look at based on context. So in this case, I've got two monatomic ions. What's the typical monatomic ion charge for sodium and chloride? Negative one. So whose oxidation state or charge got lower? Yeah, because he went from zero to minus one. And that's why they call it reduced. It's the oxidation state that's going down. That's why they call it reduced. So here we would say that Cl2 got reduced. It is the reactant that is getting reduced. Cool. But what does reduction actually mean again? Gaining an electron. So if you gain money, what happens to your bank account? It goes up. But if you gain electrons, what happens to your oxidation state? It goes down because electrons are negatively charged. You're gaining negative charges. So it seems backwards. When you gain, you lose or something like that, right? But when you gain electrons, your oxidation state goes down. Seems a little backwards, just making a point of it. So on the other side of the coin here, sodium's oxidation state goes up. And it's because he lost negative charges. He got oxidized. instead. Sweet, some other other rules you gotta know. So if I have something like water here, it's not ionic, it's now a molecular compound. So with molecular compounds, I gave you some rules there. Oxygen is usually minus two, unless you have a peroxide where you have O2, but not just O2, it's O2 with either hydrogen or a group one metal. Because if I have something like CO2, that's not a peroxide. Gotta be hydrogen or a group one metal. Cool, and in this case, so oxygen in either one of these cases, 
Here it's minus 2, but in the exception here for a peroxide, it's minus 1. And typically, the other element just balances everything else out. The last element you assign balances the rest out. So in this case, what did hydrogen have to be? Mm, it's Oxidation states are always defined per atom. Oh, so, plus one. so good, so plus 1, even though there's two of them. Awesome. And then what about right here? Hydrogen peroxide, also plus 1. Great. Cool. So put some other ones on there. Hydrogen's usually plus one. The only exception is when hydrogen is bonded to a metal only. When you see hydrogen with only a metal, it's not common, but we call this a hydride. So, but in this case, we got a monatomic ion right there in sodium and an ionic compound, metal, non-metal. What's sodium as a monatomic ion? Plus one, what would hydrogen have to be to balance in this case? Negative one. So very rare to see these, but on the odd chance you do, when hydrogen's only with a metal, that's when hydrogen's not plus one, but minus one instead. Cool. Fluorine is always negative one in a molecular compound, and your halogens are usually minus one, unless they happen to be bond to oxygen. For example, say we got this case. Chlorine's usually minus one, but not here. He's bonded to oxygen. So in this case, who would I sign first? So actually, I'll sign the O first. Next semester, I'll show you how to sign the H first. But in this case, oxygen, not a peroxide, so it gets its normal negative 2. And hydrogen, not bonded to only a metal, so it gets his normal plus 1. And chlorine's going to be left balancing the rest out. What is chlorine going to have to be to make this work? No, there's four of these oxygens that are minus 2 each. So if I, if I have four of these oxygens, what total negative charge is that? Yeah. So the oxidation state is always defined per atom, and it's negative two. But there's four of them for a total charge of minus eight. So there's one hydrogen here. That's plus one, and so chlorine's got to be good. Plus seven. Cool. That's kind of how oxidation states work. You're going to want to you know, definitely practice a few examples. It's something you want to be able to do, but not just do, but do quickly. All right, last two sets of questions on your handout involving redox. The first is just recognizing redox. I put four reactions on your handout, and I just asked which of these are redox reactions, which are not. So if we're going to go through these a little bit, recognizing redox reactions involves a change in oxidation state, just like we saw back over here. Here sodium was 0. Here it's no longer 0. It's something else, plus 1. As long as you get changes in oxidation states, and usually, again, you're going to have one that goes up and one goes down as we have a transfer of electrons, you can actually have more than one going up and down. You can actually have complex redox reactions, but typically the ones you're going to see, one species getting oxidized, one reduced. So recognizing changes in oxidation states. The slow way of recognizing these as redox is to go through and assign oxidation states for every single element in every single reaction. That is the slow way to do this. Do you feel like you had a lot of extra time on your hands for exam one? Like extra half hour maybe? Yeah, not so much. They usually, they have this whole exam writing thing down to a science. They know that on a 25 question test, if you're gonna get 50 minutes, give or take, that they have time to math, ask you at most like eight calculation questions, because they take longer. So they have this all down to a science. They know how to make this take all the way up to the brink for the average student, so you don't have a lot of extra time. So, recognizing redox. First thing to look for, find something in, a, in the zero oxidation state. An element all by itself, with no charge. In the first reaction, do we have any elements all by themselves with no charge? Yeah. Right here and right here. Are they still in the zero oxidation states over here? No. What oxidation states are they in? I don't care. I just know they're not zero. If they're zero over here and they're not zero over here, they change. That is a redox reaction. Could it also be in a decomp that, that can happen too, like if it's the opposite? So what, not decomposition this way. This way it would be, but this way it would be combination. Would a decomposition reaction be an oxidation reduction? Not necessarily. Oh, not so not necessarily. So like if you have that, yes. If, not. if I have what? Like that, yes, well, in this case, I just saw I have oxidation states that changed. If you have oxidation states that change, that's redox. Uh -huh. That's your hallmark. If it's an electron transfer reaction, the way to recognize that is charges or oxidation states changed. So this next one is a decomposition reaction, by the way. 
Do I have anybody there zero oxidation states that I can identify really quickly? No, then I'm skipping it. I'll come back to it. In the next one, do I have anybody in their zero oxidation states? Nope, so I'll skip it. In the last one, do I have anybody in their zero oxidation states? Yeah. Copper on the reactant side is zero, and on this side, he's part of a compound, so he's not zero. Silver on the product side is zero, and on this side, he's part of a compound, so he's not zero. That's redox. Okay. So we saved some time here. Two out of the four were very simple to identify as redox. Now we got to go back over these other two. This third one, do you recognize what kind of reaction this is? Uh, the third one. The second one's definitely decomposition, but the third one. So combustion's reactions with oxygen. It's not that. Yes, double displacement or double replacement, metathesis exchange, whatever you want to call it. Double displacement reactions are not redox reactions. You will find silver's plus one, he's plus one. Nitrogen here is plus five, he's still plus five, being part of nitrate still. Plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, nobody changes. So double displacement reactions are never redox reactions. So that's a no. Okay. So now we know, find your zero oxidation states. So, and if it's zero on one side, not zero on the other, easy way to identify something changed. But not all redox reactions have something in the zero oxidation state. We just got lucky here. Some of them you might end up having to go through and assign all the oxidation states and you're just stuck. And in fact, I'm going to recommend we do that here to see if this is redox or not. So let's just start assigning oxidation states. Calcium. Calcium is a monatomic ion, part of an ionic compound. And being group two metal is plus two. What about on this side? Uh, Still plus two, monatomic ion in an ionic compound. Great, okay, nothing changing yet. So what about, let's go oxygen next. Oxygen's part of a, a polyatomic ion here. He's bonded to a non-metal, technically. So normal no. negative two oxidation state. Wants to gain two electrons to look like his hero, a noble gas. Minus two here as well, minus two here as well. No change there. What about carbon right here? How many of these negative two options do I have? Well, I need a total of plus six to balance out the minus six here, but I've already got plus two here, so I need another plus four right there. And on this side, I've got two of these negative two oxygens right here, so carbon's got to be plus four as well. Did anybody change oxidation states? Nope, then this is not a redox reaction. There was no simple way around this. We can't just say a general rule, oh, all decompositions are not redox. It's not true. There's no rule for that. So in this case, I just had to assign oxidation states. None of them changed. It's not a redox reaction. So last question here, single replacement reactions. In fact, this last one we did for the redox is a single replacement reaction, and single replacement reactions are a type of redox reaction. So single replacement reactions, just because you can write them doesn't mean they happen. So and for reactions that happen, we say they are spontaneous. That is the buzzword. For something that actually happens, we say it's spontaneous. Is it spontaneous for leaves to pick themselves up off the ground in the fall and attach themselves to a tree? Is that spontaneous? Yeah. It is. Tree, you know, leaves just pick up themselves, fly off the ground and attach to a tree. That's what they do in the fall. I've never seen leaves do that before, but okay. So it is non-spontaneous. Now the opposite though, leaves falling off a tree in the fall that is spontaneous. That's why they call it the fall, because the leaves are falling, right? So cool. Things that actually happen are spontaneous. So in this case, I can write these reactions all day long. It doesn't mean they actually happen. So I can write on the board that Chad is the most handsome man in the world, and that does not make it true. So at all. So here's the deal. We have what's called an activity series. It's on your hand out there. So that activity series, tells you the most active metals at the top of the list and they get less active as you go down. We'll talk about what that means in a second. The way this works, I like to think of this first, take it out of the context of chemistry. So here copper is all alone, thinks nitrate's really good looking, but nitrate's with zinc. Copper's like, I'm better looking than zinc. I'm gonna steal nitrate away from zinc. And copper and nitrate end up together and now zinc ends up all alone. Cool, now here's the deal. The only way this works is if copper is better looking than zinc. The only way copper can replace zinc in this compound is if copper's better looking. The better looking metals are towards the top of the list. Is copper better looking than zinc? No. Nope, zinc's higher on the list. So this reaction is not spontaneous. Does it happen though? 
Nope. Doesn't happen. The reverse reaction happens, but the forward one does not. Same thing with the kind of the leaves. They fall off the tree. They don't pick themselves off the ground and reattach to a tree. Cool. If we look at the next one here, who is replacing whom? MG is replacing the two H's. Yeah, MG is replacing H. Is MG better looking than H on the list? Yes. Yeah, MG is higher on the list than H, so this reaction is spontaneous. This one actually does happen. What is the definition of Something that happens. Um, <laughs> what, is, what is the, um, the rules of H? Because I, that's like the, the only non metal one in the activity series. No special rule, it's just part of the activity series. Don't treat it any separately or any differently. Oh, okay. Same thing. So to replace another species, you've got to be higher on the list. That's the way it works. Now, one thing you should realize about this. So, What's the oxidation state for copper here? And magnesium, there's zero, but what are they on the other side? Um. They have charges. In fact, they're both plus two, as it turns out. Okay. Nitrate, polyatomic ion, minus one, so copper's plus two to balance. Chloride's minus one in a monatomic ion, magnesium's plus two to balance. Okay, in this case, they are both getting oxidized. The species that starts out alone is getting oxidized. So what's tricky about this, if I wrote the net ionic, nitrate's just a spectator ion in both these reactions. If I get rid of the nitrate, they're both alone. And so the whole analogy of deciding which one's better looking and ends up with a partner doesn't help you. So because if I just write the net ionic, I would have copper plus zinc two plus and the nitrate would be out of there completely. So I want you to understand what that activity series really means. So in this case, copper's going from zero to plus two, zinc is going from plus two to zero. So the copper is getting oxidized, losing electrons. The zinc is getting reduced, gaining electrons. The activity series tells you something about the species being oxidized. That's what the activity series mean. When we say we have more active metals towards the top of the list, we mean they are more easily oxidized. That's what a greater activity actually means in this context. So in this case, what makes a reaction spontaneous is that the species that is getting oxidized has to be the one on the list that is more easily oxidized toward the top of the list. So you need to be able to know how to predict this, but you also now need to be able to know why. So if I give you an activity series, I can expect you to be able to answer whether these kind of reactions are spontaneous or not. But I can give you an activity series and just say which of the following is the most easily oxidized. And you're supposed to know that, oh yeah, the most easily oxidized ones are towards the top of the list. That's what the activity really is all about.